Uh, this is Nathan Stuck again, uh, the CEO of Whisper. And uh, today we're going to be talking about a technical uh, topic, uh, 5G Tech Talk for WIS. And I really love to make this um, interactive. So please, please, please ask questions during it. Uh, we'll, we'll stop. I'll, I'll look at them and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, even though this is a technical discussion, um, I'm going to come at this more from the business side of 5G and, and what does it maybe mean for WISPs and, and how we might be able to evaluate that. Uh, so that's the goal for today is to be able to kind of um, talk about it at, at, a, at a high level uh, and, and help you guys uh, make a decision on uh, what 5G might mean for you and your business. Uh, as always, you guys know, I like to start with a little bit of background on myself. So um, I lived in Maine. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force. We lived way, way, way up at the tip of, of Maine at Loring Air Force Base. Uh, Lay, Maine was my favorite place to live. Uh, it was just such an amazing place. I got to do a lot of camping in the snow, uh, cross-country skiing. Uh, I got into Boy Scouts there in a big way. I got my Eagle Scout when I was up there. Um, I also ran track, just not like this guy. I was like the exact opposite of this guy. Uh, I did long distance running and I, I wasn't even really good at that. I, I don't uh, particularly care to run, but I, I was on the track team there. Uh, I was also a, a loan shark. Now, now before you go to turn me in, I was a very nice loan shark. And what I did was on the track team every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, we had uh, track meets and they gave us $5 each to, to buy a meal. And that was never enough. So I would lend somebody and this, remember, this is in seventh grade. Uh, I would lend somebody two dollars, and you know, I gave them a piece of paper that said, you know, I so and so will pay Nathan Stuke back the two dollars, and and I think maybe in seventh grade that's a big deal, right? You had to sign a piece of paper, and um, where I what I did was though, if you pay me back the next day, uh, it was just two dollars. So you borrowed two dollars from me, and I paid you back two dollars, or you paid me back two dollars, right? That's really nice. Every day after that, it doubled. Um, and, uh, so that means like, if you didn't pay me back the one day, then it would be $4 and then $8 and then 16. Um, and, and weekends didn't count. Holidays didn't count. Um, if I was sick from school, if you were sick from school, it didn't count. And, um, I, I, I ran this business for quite some time. And what ultimately shut me down was the school had done an analysis of their absentee and realized it was a lot of kids that owed me money. <laughs> so they they had to have me stop uh, stop uh, lending money out because uh, that people kids were missing school because of it. Uh, I also mowed lawns. I uh, did about 15 to 16 lawns a, a weekend. They were all inspected on the Air Force Base uh, on the Monday, so you had to do it over the weekend. Even if it rained, you had to get out there and do that work. Uh, I sold candy at school as well, but just not like this. It was more like this uh, because you weren't allowed to sell candy at school, but I, I did it anyway. Uh, this is also where I learned attitude is everything. You know, I, I have dyslexia, so I spell at a third grade level and read at a six. And I remember sitting in seventh grade in, in world history class, two rows over, three, three seats back, and realized that, holy cow, I have dyslexia. And it doesn't matter if I have a good attitude or a bad attitude about it, I still have dyslexia. Uh, and, and just flip of a flip of a, a coin like that, I changed my attitude about my dyslexia to the point where my mom even wondered if the same Nathan came home from school. Uh, yes, school still took me a really long time. And yes, it was still painful to do the homework. But I changed my attitude and my outlook on on why I had dyslexia uh, and, and what it was uh, and how it affected me. So this is where I firmly, firmly believe was the, was the changing point in my life that attitude is everything and, and you get to choose your attitude, right? You don't get to choose your circumstances all the time, but you get to choose your attitude for sure. Um, so with that, before we get in, remember you define your success. Um, no matter how successful you are, there's probably somebody out there more successful. Um, and if you're always chasing to somebody else, then you'll never be successful. But uh, if you define what success means for you, uh, then you'll always be successful. And I encourage you to push the limits, um, but, but do, it, uh, do it smartly and, and do it uh, within, within something that, that truly makes you happy and makes you uh, successful uh, by your own definition. Uh, so let's look at what 5G can do better than 4G, right? So this graphics we have here, you know, it's, you've got mobile broadband, uh, you've got dense crowds of users, you've got the IoT network, uh, you've got the IoT sensors, you know, it, it's, you've got all of these things that, you know, 5G is going to be amazing compared to 4G. Uh, there's so many things out there. I mean, the media is out there every day telling us how much better it is, you know, it'd be more reliable and, 
it'll use less less battery and it's just a lot of really really cool things uh when you look at this graphics it's kind of interesting to see um the the speed difference right you you have these speeds that that it can do and they're toting that it's going to be you know 10 times more speed and it's going to be amazing and what can we do and I find it quite funny when um, some people early on were doing the 5G testing in the one area in Chicago that you could get 5G, and um, they would blow through their data caps uh, literally by doing a couple speed tests, right, because they were pushing a, a gig or two uh, across it. And, and I think I'd, I'd liken 4G to be like this little car, right, and, and 5G is like a sports car, right, a race car. There's, there is a big difference uh, in that. Um, so I, I've got something, I mean, that's obviously, this is what, what I'm saying. Um, I think there's some other amazing things that 5G can do. And, and I've got a little video uh, that I'm going to attempt to play, uh, to play for you here. And I'm going to, I'm going to change my sound out a little bit so we can see if, uh, if this will actually, uh, actually work for us here. Uh, hopefully we can get this to work. Let's see, I'm going to uh, turn off. I'm going to take off my headphones. I think because last time we had this problem here. There we go. And let's try this. Let me see. Can, you, can you hear that? All right. So this is an advertisement for 5G. So let's see, can you hear me now? All right, so uh, leave it to the Italians to be super, super dramatic, right? I mean, that was very, very moving. This gentleman did open heart surgery uh, from who knows where in the world to who knows where in the world, saved a life, and, and it was all because of, of 5G. And, and that's there's amazing, amazing things that 5G is going to be able to do for us. Um, so, so let's look at 5G here and see that, you know, the U.S. is in a race to 5G. Uh, and the question in my mind is, who are we racing with, right? I, I mean, it, it, it's great that we all want better technology, but, but why is it a race? Why is it so much that we have, to, we have to be the first one with the most 5G or the first one with that? Uh, the other thing I say is, is it a race we want to win? And if so, why? Um, I know the large telcos will say, oh, well, we need more spectrum. We need more spectrum. In order to provide the, the bandwidth uh, that the, the consumer wants, we need more, which is absolutely true. Um, but with 5G, is 5G this race that we're in, this, this heated battle with supposedly other people, is that something that's really a race that, that we need and, and want to win uh, in lieu of maybe providing really, really good service. Uh, and, and my question is, is what about everyone else that has no Gs, right? There are still vast areas in the U.S. that you can get little to no cell service. Um, why are we coming back and pushing this 5G and, and rolling it out when we, we haven't even finished rolling out connectivity for everyone, uh, at least mobile connectivity for everyone, um, the, the no Gers, if you will? Um, so the, some of the 5G claims, when you look at what it can do and what the hype is, if we kind of look through the, the hype, uh, it says it's going to be 100 times the speed of 4G. I say sure, uh, but only with millimeter wave. And what a lot of times what's happening here is when you listen to the hype and they say how amazing it is and how fast it's going to be uh, and what it's going to be like, they're claiming that with millimeter wave, um, but millimeter wave doesn't go very far. 
millimeter wave is is more measured in meters, not kilometers and not miles worth of service. So yes, it's great that 5G is going to be 100 times better, but it's not 100 times better just because it's 5G. Uh, they're using a totally different frequency, uh, and it, it's really only about 20% better uh, than than 4G if you were to compare the same spectrum to the same spectrum. Um, they also tout multi-user MIMO, massive user MIMO. Um, we, we have that in our fixed wireless world, multi-user MIMO, massive user MIMO. I think it's a great thing. It's an amazing thing that it's going to be able to, to let us do. Um, I've seen 64 by 64, which... Um, back when I gave this presentation uh, last year in, in South Africa at a, at a conference, you know, not a lot of people had seen 64 by 64 or even 128 by 128. And what does that look like? Um, but the problem is there's a diminishing return there. Things become so complex when you start adding those magnitudes of multi-user MIMO and different things. Plus, you have to have, without getting to the super technical, the, the spatial diversity you have to have and what you have to have. That, that, that doesn't really solve the problem. It helps, don't get me wrong. Um, Multi-user MIMO, massive user MIMO is really good. But when you start touting the 64s and the 128, the technology just isn't quite there yet. Um, cheaper for the CPE cost, right? That's one of the things that, that 5G says. It's, it's going to be everywhere. 4G, there's supposedly 20 billion devices out there that have 4G chips in them. There's going to be even more that have 5G. Um, is the CPE going to be cheaper? I don't know. We, we've been using LTE for the past five years, um, and my CPE costs have barely gone down. Um, the, the lure of getting a $15 CPE like the, the cable companies have, um, I think that's a misnomer because that, that, that very, very inexpensive CPE that they have is indoor rated, has an indoor power supply, doesn't have any real antennas. All it is is doing a conversion from a, a coax system to, to an ethernet. Um, so yeah, they can get it down that cheap. Uh, whereas with when you look at a CPE that we have, a client premise equipment for, for LTE or even for any fixed wireless, it has to be outdoor hardened. It has to have an antenna built into it. It has to have a lot of other things. Um, so I'm not quite so sure that this, this promise of a cheaper CPE is really something out there that we can chase. Um, the other thing is, is we've seen our base station costs honestly go up. Now, maybe the same physical hardware is the same cost, but if I want multi-user MIMO, if I want uh, dual carrier aggregation, dissimilar dual carrier aggregation and those type of things, uh, that, that price goes up and the, the price goes up and up and up for those. So I, I'm not quite so sure that even though we've been using 5G for almost, or sorry, we've used LTE uh, for almost uh, five years now, I, I don't know that I've seen the price savings that we were we were maybe led led to believe would be there. Um, and, and that's where some of the, the the long term evolution, you know, that's LTE, right, and the the 4G, 5G, and and the whole purpose of LTE. Um, but I, I think we've reached a critical mass. The whole reason they wanted to go to LTE is that it would have a long, you know, you wouldn't have to rip and replace your network every so many years. Um, but what's happened is it, it's forced the network, uh, the networks to, to be only compatible with LTE. And there's so many more advances that I'll talk about later on today that, that are, are there that are better than LTE, better than 5G. But because the ecosystem is 20 billion devices strong, you can't just start a new network. They have to be backwards compatible. Um, so I, I see the, the fact that everybody has converged on this LTE standard is actually being the opposite effect of innovation. Uh, and for good reason, right? There's a good reason why. You know, we would never would have gotten to uh, 20 billion devices if we didn't have the standard. Um, but I, I think it's interesting to, to see how it's kind of stifled some of that uh, that innovation that we we all look for. So you know we kind of go back to this this commercial, and, and I know I'm, I'm I'm picking on this commercial, but I, let, let's look at this one. And I, I was trying to figure out in my head, you know, if he's going to have enough bandwidth to provide open heart surgery that is reliable enough, and that that works well enough for him to control a, rem a robotic. Most of the the, the things we work with now in healthcare, you know, they're all about redundancies and they're all about, um, you know, very, very high speed, low, low latency. So that way you can have uh, have that. And that's that's from some experimental um, 
uh, surgeries, not open heart surgery. But so I, I kind of drilled in on this and I tried to figure out how in the world did they do that? I see no cell t cell towers. I see no no cell um, you know antennas or anything on any of the sides. So, uh, but it, it, I finally caught it. And and what I saw here was if you see this is where the gentleman goes outside and he's starting to set up his the system. So what the telco did is they sent not one boat but two boats uh, to be his um, redundancy to get him his internet. Somehow they did that and and that's how he was able to connect with his 5G and it'd be close enough for millimeter wave to have that much. Um, that much throughput. So uh, hopefully you're all laughing. Hopefully you got the joke that it's, it's you know, it's a great, great commercial, um, but I, I think it's very, very far-fetched as to what could really be possible over 5G. And I'm glad we have the dreamers out there and I'm, I'm glad we're pushing towards something like this. Um, but it's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, it is being perceived that an individual user would have that, that capability. Uh, so let's shift gears a little bit and say, well, why might a WISP want to use 5G, right? As, as you can probably tell, I'm not a big fan of 5G, um, at least for the hype, right? I like to look behind the hype and see what's really going on behind the scenes. And it's 20% better than 4G. And yes, the next version of 5G, which will be out in a couple of years, will be even better. And yes, that's fine. Um, but but what is it? why would a WISP possibly want to use 5G? Uh, this one, if you're planning to sell to a telco. So if one of your exit strategy is to sell to a larger uh, telecommunications company that already uses 5G, maybe T-Mobile, AT&T, uh, Verizon wants to come by you or you want to try to sell to them, maybe that's a pretty good reason. Use their standard, use the same equipment that they use, uh, so that way when they come to buy you, you can get maximum value because it's an easy plug-in, right? It's not a rip and replace, it's not different equipment. Uh, the other reason I think they might be interested in 5G is the non-line of sight capability. With the exact same spectrum, the non-line of sight capability of LTE or 5G compared to more of your traditional Wi-Fi based chipsets is much, much better. Your receive sensitivity is better. Remember, LTE was designed for the cell phone, right? And what do we know about cell phones? Well, they're mobile. We all know how well our cell phones don't work. And that reason is, is you give up reliability and throughput for mobility. And one of the benefits of doing fixed internet over a mobile service, which LTE is a mobile service, then that allows you to take up some of those benefits of how it, it does some of its advanced logarithms and everything to, to, to kind of get around the non-line of sight uh, problem. Another reason is that you would like to be standards based. Um, for a long time in our, in Whisper's history, we've been um, specific to one manufacturer, um, not standards based. We were to their standard, but not an industry standard. Uh, and we, we got lured into the LTE and, and we, we had to solve some of our non-line of sight problems. So they said, hey, you know, what's really, really cool is you can buy anybody's CPE. They all work with our, our, um, our, uh, uh, our, our base stations and you can buy anybody's CPE. So I went with another group of people uh, we sourced some CPEs. We brought them over in a container from China. Uh, we got them all ready to go. And then we started having problems. And we started having problems. And then uh, the manufacturer of the base station said, oh, well, we know we said we work with all CPEs, but we don't work with that one. It's, it's the CPE manufacturer's fault. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But, but if it's the CPE manufacturer's fault, then... Um, who, who, I mean, I'm only buying so many CPEs from the manufacturer. I'm only buying so many base station, you know, lots of pointing fingers. Who, who's responsible for what? Whereas when I, when I use a closed ecosystem from one manufacturer, if my CPE can't talk to my base station, I know who's going to fix that. So we, we have seen firsthand some problems with that supposed CPE flexibility. Now, if you choose one that's been interrupted, tested and everything, then that's not a problem. We've had a lot of great success with those. Um, another one, another reason why you might want to um, do 5G is uh, employee knowledge. There are a lot more people out there in the world that understand what 5G is or 4G and can do engineering and design with it than are that can understand fixed wireless. Um, so if you're looking for a lot of employees and you're growing very quickly, there there is a general employee knowledge base that you can tap into with more of your 
traditional telco 4G, 5G rollouts than you can with fixed wireless. So now let's look at a little bit as to why you might not you want to use 5G. Uh, first of all, it's super, super expensive. Um, the 5G equipment for the same amount of speeds, uh, for, for the same kind of apples to apples comparison, yes, it's, it's carrier grade, but we can get great carrier grade fixed wireless. It's just a lot more expensive. There's a lot more that goes into it. Million dollar core. Yes, there's some you know open source cores you can get to bring that down. And yes, you can go together with a group of people. But you know there's a lot of other things that go along that you have to have to do. Uh, limited equipment choices. As soon as you decide to go the LTE route uh, or 5G route, there are only a few manufacturers you can choose from. Uh, whereas if you keep your options a little bit more open and you say, okay, well, I'm, you know, I, I could go more proprietary or I could go more open standards. Um, LTE is an option and you look at all of them. As soon as you say, I'm only going to go LTE, you start limiting your equipment choices. Which did I mention? It's expensive, right? When you limit those equipment choices, you, you actually then drive up your cost because there's a smaller subset of, of companies that you can choose from. They know that. Uh, you get into the 5G ecosystem, and now I'm, I'm kind of stuck with only being able to choose a couple. And unfortunately, our bigger brothers doing mobile, uh, they have billion-dollar budgets, and, and they pay a lot of money for this, whereas we have much smaller budgets, and um, the expense doesn't normally uh, play out right. Um, I, I feel there's better technology out there. I'm going to share one company with you um, here shortly that I think has better technology than what 5G delivers um, and in what we can do with that. Um, there's, there's actually multiple companies out there, but I'm going to share just kind of one with you today. Uh, did I mention they're expensive? I think I might have said that, but, but it's, it's very, very expensive uh, to, to play in the same realm as, as the large uh, telcos that are doing mobile. Um, so better technology out there. Uh, we, WISPs, we own our complete ecosystem. So one of the drawbacks to having 20 billion devices in LTE is no one provider can be like, hey, um, I'm going to turn off my 4G network so I can turn on my 5G network or my 6G network or my whatever network. Um, it has to be backwards compatible because the consumer is the one that has to buy the CPE and has the phone. Uh, so they have to wait. And my dad, uh, he, he's not big on the, on the technology side. He had a flip phone forever until the, the phone company finally sent him a letter saying, your phone will cease to work in six months if you don't get a new one. I mean, that's how old his phone was, right? We had bought battery after battery after battery, keeping it working for him. He, he liked it and that's fine. And we ultimately had to upgrade him to a smartphone. Um, but, but that's out there. Now you multiply that by hundreds of millions of people and there's always gonna be those people like, no, I'm completely happy with my phone. Why would I wanna upgrade? Uh, whereas a Wisp, we own our whole ecosystem. So if we find a better solution um, and it requires us to replace the CPE and the AP, we can do that. Do I want to do that all the time? No. In my original business plan, I had it set for three three years. Every three years, I was going to have to go out, and I'm so glad I was wrong. Uh, so far, it's been every seven to ten years, uh, because as we got larger and larger and larger, it became much, much harder, much more time-consuming. Money aside, even if we had all the money, much, much more time-consuming to go out and change out CPEs of all the customers. Um, and generally, we have that smaller ecosystem, right? So any one company has a smaller ecosystem we can afford uh, to do that. Uh, so Cohere is one company that I'm going to talk about. It's kind of neat what they've done. Uh, they have a, a new modulation scheme called OTFS. Um, and, and that's something, there's a couple companies working on it. But, but what happens is, is when you do that order of magnitude, right, when you go um, 40, 64 by 64 or 128 by 128 multi-user MIMO, it isn't a one plus one plus one because you get interference and you can't communicate with this customer, which is right next to this customer, the complexity gets a lot more. What they've been able to solve is they've been able to solve the, the multi-user MIMO as a one plus one plus one. So if you add four, four streams, you'll get you'll equal four, not 2.2. And um, this little graphics kind of shows what they've done. They've, they've been able to see in, 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 in two dimension the radio signal, and it makes the math a lot simpler. 
Uh, and and this is kind of how they what they found out is you know wireless is nothing more than math, amazing math, way above my 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 math comprehension. But we've had TDMA, we've had OFDM, we've had CDMA, right? And and CDMA is I'm going to shoot you with a rifle, one shot, and pretty much every time I shoot you, I will get it through. But it's really really slow, but it's pretty reliable, really reliable, and it's guaranteed to get through. OFDM is I'm going to shoot you with a shotgun. Eh, maybe only 60% of my signal will get to you, but I could send a lot more to you. And maybe sometimes it doesn't get to you at all because it gets lost somewhere. What they found is their OTSF is a, a, a mathematical, those other ones are derivatives of that. So the math, instead of getting more complicated, actually becomes easier. And they're doing amazing things. And I share their technology with you just because I, I think they're on the forefront of what's going to be possible in wireless down the road. Um, it's not here today, um, but they're they're working really hard to get it there. And I, I think it's going to be amazing what what lots of companies out there are doing uh, with wireless. What we know about wireless is so so small compared to what really really is capable out there. So I look at 5G as the right tool for the right job. The same way I look at fiber, the right tool for the right job. Um, and you'll have to make your own choice if you're going to go to 5G. I don't want to dissuade you. I, I know in this presentation I've talked negatively about 5G. Don't get me wrong. I want every provider, including my mobile provider, to roll out 5G as fast as they can because I know it's going to be better uh, than what I have right now in 4G. Um, I'm just not so sure it's the right tool for, for WISPs, uh, for my WISPs specifically. So if we do use 5G, we'll use it for our non-line of sight. Um, that would be the, the area where we have the, the, the least amount of choices in equipment that can burn through trees and how does it get through there. So we will use it for that. Uh, and then we'll also probably use it in some areas where you have 2.5 gigahertz. Our equipment choices in 2.5 because it's licensed band, it's very similar to the one that um, Sprint, now T-Mobile has. Um, we already have very, very limited amount of, of, of choices there. Um, so the price is already pretty high, and then if we can, might as well go 5G if we can. Um, so those are some of the areas where we're going to use it, and when we think about it as a right tool for the right job, uh, something that uh, we're going to be evaluating. Uh, so with that, that's kind of my, my talk in a nutshell about 5G. Hopefully it was uh, beneficial to you, and um, we'll see if we have any, any questions from anybody. Um, I know last time when we opened it up to any questions, we had a ton, which was awesome. Uh, so happy to take any questions that we uh, we might have for this. Um, let's see, the one we have here is uh, so the the question is, um, you know, is it's a pretty heavy lift financially uh, or asset wise for a WIS to get into 5G just for a potential acquisition to a telco? Is it worth it to the WISP? Well, I, I pose that as a possible um, a possible solution. Uh, yes, for me, the it's a pretty heavy lift and I wouldn't do it if that was my outcome um, or if that was my end goal because you never know what the big guys are going to do. They may decide to, to bowl over you. They may decide that they're not even going to build in your area. So I think that would be pretty risky. Um, other people actually have um, actually have you know inroads with with them already, and they kind of are already building up to be bought. So that might work out well for them. Um, but I I would make uh, I wouldn't make that move um, my, myself personally. Um, I think uh, another another question that I, I get asked a lot is, you know, is there a way for me to try it, right? 5G, you have sometimes a half a million to a million dollar um, core that you have to put in, and then you have, you know, the very expensive base stations. And a lot of the manufacturers, especially the manufacturers that are doing um, 5G without a core, right, where the EPC is actually on the base station itself, those you can do trials on, and it's not as expensive to get into. Um, if you really want to try some of the larger providers and the larger um, uh, providers of 5G equipment, there are other WISTs that are already running it that I'm, I'm sure you could go visit uh, or you could say, hey, can we work out something where I can 
um, rent part of your core from you. And, and there's a lot of logistics that go along with that. But if you are interested in trying to get into it, I, I think there are ways for you to be real creative to not have to bet bet the bank, uh, right, or bet the farm um, on, on um, uh, that. Um, so um, the... The, the WISC that you're kind of looking for there, I, I won't list the, the names of them. I know we had a question kind of of what are the top WISC that are using the, the LTE. I, I, I haven't talked to them to see if I can actually give out their names, so I'm not going to do that. But watch the WISP list um, on, on WISPA. Watch the, the, the Facebook uh, groups that, that fix wireless. In, and you'll be able to tell who's doing LTE and who's, who's not. Uh, and that way you can kind of try to track them down. If you don't know them and, and you want to reach out to me to, to do it, I'm happy to, to try to do an introduction uh, and, and then see if they can, they can help you. Um, so let's see if we have uh, any other questions. While well, wait to see if we have any other questions, I, I wanted to plug our, our Built to Lead. Um, that's our um, leadership training that we're doing. It's open to anybody. Uh, all you have to do is email in, uh, and no, your email won't become spammed with, with all kinds of marketing, but you uh, email in, and uh, we'll put that down in the comments, and you can email in, and we'll, we'll get you some information as we're getting ready to start that. Uh, that's probably going to start here within, within about a month. We're going to get that up and rolling and start some of our first, uh, first classes we have. The nice thing about being virtual and everybody understanding how to do virtual now is it should be a lot easier for us to add people in. And uh, we're, we're willing to do this. And some people may say, well, whoa, why in the world are you doing this? Um, because we can. Because we can. Uh, my goal is, is nothing more than to just help people become better leaders and be better people, be, be the, better, the best version of themselves they can be. And if we can help facilitate that with the resources we have, then that works perfect for me. So I, I don't see any other questions. So um, thank you for, for tuning in today. Uh, hopefully this is worth your time and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks a lot.